you can use CSS alone to define some very complex animated effects. But you can take animations to a whole new level of sophistication by integrating them with JavaScript. So open animationapi.html in the Working Files folder. This demonstrates how the state of an animation can be captured as it progresses. It means you could queue animations in order or take different routes depending on user interaction. So let's see how this works. When I click this button, it applies a class which starts a basic animation, and this fades the button in and out three times. The start, iteration, and ending events are captured in JavaScript and logged to this console. So let's look at the code. First, we have the button itself. Now when an enable class is added to this button, it sets a new animation which uses the flash keyframes. And it applies it three times. Now you notice that we've set just one keyframe which sets the opacity at 50% duration to zero. Now the browser will know that opacity of one must be applied at zero and 100%, so we don't need to define any more keyframes. So let's look at our JavaScript. Anim is our button element defined up here. We have a click event which toggles the animation by adding or removing an enabled class. But here are where the animation API events are applied. Animation start is fired when the animation starts for the first time. Animation iteration is fired at the start of every new animation iteration. That's every iteration with the exception of the very first one. And finally, the animation end event is fired when the animation ends. Now, unfortunately, that's not the whole story because the WebKit browsers require a WebKit prefix version for the same events. Note also that they use camel case rather than lowercase. Now, you could write simpler code to handle these events, but I've expanded it out to show what's happening. It doesn't matter in all the other browsers that aren't WebKit, they'll just ignore these three events here. Now in our animation listener function, it's past the event object. Now this has a couple of additional properties. The first is animation name. That's the name of the keyframes set when we defined the animation. So in this case, it's flash. And the next is elapsed time, which is the number of seconds which have elapsed since the animation started. Now obviously we can react to these events and perform some action. Now the only thing I'm doing here is detecting that the animation is ended and then running the toggle animation function here, which removes the enabled class. Let's run it again. And you can see that the animation flash was started at zero seconds, animation iteration fired at one and two seconds, animation end was fired at three seconds. Now I would say it's quite rare you need this type of code to react to CSS animations but it's useful to know if you're building a complex client-side application.